the lesson. When the roll is called up yonder, 852, 852. I know you can barely read that. <laughs> Real small. <laughs> Mark your pe uh, song books, uh, page 869, the song of invitation, not the message. Uh, the world is called younger, we will form the message. And the necessity of obedience to all mankind. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the earth's saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is called of yonder, I'll be there. Or when the road is called of yonder, when the road is called of yonder, when the road When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Well, when the road is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Or oh, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called of yonder, when the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. again. Thank you for the Salem Circle. And uh, I want to continue to keep my prayers and Sister Givens that she mm -hmm. get better in time. And may the Lord mm -hmm. be able to strengthen her. And give her much, much strength more greater than a unicorn. And give her much wings better than an eagle. And be able to fly spiritually in the Lord and, and throughout this land of living. Let us go to our message for today. Necessities of obedience for all mankind. Necessity of obedience for all mankind. Three levels today that I will be giving to you. This is part one. Part two next week. If it's the Lord's will. Next week. The three examples of dealing with obedience versus disobedience. The necessities of the importance of all mankind. First, Showing of the necessities of obedience versus disobedience, one of great reward and the other is greater punishment. Second, 
There is nothing that can be substituted for obedience. But obedience is necessary for all knowledge of understanding for all mankind. And number three, false hope with no hope is no hope at all for being disobedient because the results of not being disobedient, you will see for all mankind if you obey not. That's the three points this morning. As I get this ball rolling down the road. The keys this morning I like to focus upon are words of ooh, ooh. the necessities. It parallels with necessity parallels with necessary. Mm -hmm. See, I'm gonna give you some things this morning. The necessary, the necessities, and how these three blend together and they're the same. Keys this morning in the necessary of obedience for all mankind. Necessary, necessity is something that is a fact being required in a disposition. He says the necessity of providing parental guidance and should be a parent. See, Brother Gibbons and Sister Gibbons, they parent in the home of the children and they have parental guidance to the children. And they are a parent, given the examples of Christ, of the necessity and the necessary things in their life. Amen. And the examples of the indispensable things, a good book is necessary for a road trip. Because you that are in the back, it's a long journey, eight hours plus. So we need the books and the pauses, all we need on this road trip and all the games we can play to be focused. So we won't distract mother or father who's on the road traveling with traveling grace. And a great child is needed in this setting because that child has to be upon the what? Obediency in this travel. Let the child travel with obediency in Christ that it helps the mother and father focus on the road of the people that run on the road and road rage, that be able to focus upon and not be distracted at all. See, the sandwich in this necessity and necessary, the difference. It is necessary to have a living room or a bathroom or a toilet. It's, the trouble is when you don't have it in the process, where could I go to sit down? Where could I go to use the restroom? And when you're in the restroom, you're going to need toilet paper for the restroom in time. The things, the two things that separate the two, but they're still the same. The word means they're the same, but the necessity is a noun form. Necessity, the necessary is an adjective. See, and, and necessarily is an adverb. Ad adverb, I'm sorry. He said three examples of this tree of the book of the flight that we're on. People feel that they need a phone. This is a necessity. Two, going to California is necessary, but money needs to be in this travel of going to California. And this is what gives it an adjective. But without the key information, the change of the travel form makes it without the adjective, which is the mm -hmm. adjective, and it's not carried out. But the objective is to carry out. But it can be a non-objective because you weren't able to carry it out because you didn't have the funds to go. And the third point, necessarily travel plans can be booked. But the flight can be canceled. But the adverb is intercepted. Interceptions do come. Because there could be tornado watch that grounds the plane mm -hmm. where you can't go necessarily, right? So that's temporal where you can't go. But in time, your flight will come back on flight in time to be able to travel. See, see, the, see the things. In the separation of those, you got the noun 
objective, and adverb. See how that works? And look how obediency comes in. Obediency is something in a human behavior, obedient and social influence in Christ. Person yields his spirit in the instructions, in the order of the instructions of authority. It's something you figure out how God compliance you must do in your behavior. The influence is coming from Christ. It has to be a spiritual influence in Christ for to have the peer of the spiritual feeding of Christ to be able to tell others about Christ. Mm -hmm. So you can help them come to Christ. That's the obedience. But when you look up the word obedience, look what you find when you look up this word. In reference to two chapters, and, and, and my brothers probably already know where I'm going when it says that when you look at this word. When you do a Bible lookup on obedience, the false notion when you do a lookup on this, there's two scriptures that come up when you do this. They tell you that it reference to John and Romans. The book of John and the book of Romans. That's the false notion. But look what it says online about this. It says, confessing your sins daily, repentantly against uh, yourself and knowing God lit loves and he, for, he, he has forgiven your sins daily. It tells you also that you must read John chap, chapter John, the, the chapter of John mm -hmm. and the book of also of Romans. It says when, it, when you visit this, he said also it continues, it says visiting a Bible, believing a, a, a Jesus and a and gospel filled church. Check it out. Mm -hmm. A truth loving church. Look at that. And person loving is a great way to learn more about God and meet the people <laughs> who encourage you. That's what you read. That's what you find online about that mm -hmm. word. First off, when they talk about John, they're talking about John 3.16. Mm -hmm. Second off, I know they're talking about Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. And third, they said a Bible, and it ain't the Bible. Fourth, a loving church. It's a lot of love in church, but they ain't the right church. Wrong house, wrong place. God is not with them. And then here it is. People to encourage you. What people are, this is all the this the call of our people to Ecclesia? Mm -hmm. That is that is the church. Yeah. That is the people of God. But if it's just the people. Or a people, that's not the people of God. Mm -hmm. Let me get to my lesson. Exodus chapter 24. Exodus 24 verse uh, 1 through 11 is the scripture text. But I'm going to be reading the, uh, Exodus 24 7. This particular setting is looking at the covenant. The covenant is sealed with blood. This is Moses' time and how the covenant was, was sealed with blood. How they sprinkle around the post and around the altar in that time frame. But here go the book that I want to read. Exodus 24, 7. And he took the book of the covenant and he read in the audience of the people and they said all that the Lord had said. We will do. See how necessary that is? He says, we will do. That's obedience in Christ. He says, and be obedient. You see how strong that is. See, obedience is somebody being student to the word. Studying the word on a daily basis. Not just hearing the word. Studying the word. Studying to show ourselves approved unto God, as the Timothy letter talks about. And he's daily in this lesson of studying for the Lord. Amen. His focus is on the Lord. You see how necessary? How the emphasis is right there in the scriptures telling you the necessity the necessary and necessarily, all those words that I talked about to start the lesson. Amen. And the obediency of God is said, will we do? And, and he said, be obedient. And the thing is, it talked about the Lord has said. See how they follow what the Lord said and not what man said. As I continue to make this move. Let's go to our scriptural information this morning. Necessity of obedience for all mankind. First, the point. Showing of the necessity of obedience versus disobedience. 
and the necessities of the influences to all mankind. One great audience of obediency versus the punishment handling in accountability. Now, obediency can inherit the kingdom of heaven. According to Matthew 7, 21 through 23, correct? You can enter into it. Mm -hmm. But look at the verses that talk about how you can and cannot. In Romans 8, 6, the disobedience again, again versus life. He says a carnal mind is death. Mm -hmm. A spiritual mind is life and peace. See, they're going, to, they're going to divide line in the same. See, everybody that confess or say the name of the Lord is not with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just because you say his name in the name of, that don't mean that you're in the Lord. There's a lot of people standing on the corner right now out there somewhere on the street corner saying how God is good all the time. That's their verse. Mm -hmm. They love the phrase of that. But it's something you got to do. Look at this. Look at something in a punishment phase. This was when in, in Genesis chapter 4. This is some three things I want you to think of on this setting of, of, of the necessities of obedience when you're being found out. First off, we have one level, this is a strong reply, and we have one that how God knows, and then the other point is the thought and process as you sit down and think about what you did. Mm -hmm. See, in Genesis 4.13, it says, even Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. See, he know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. He just didn't do right with his brother. He took his brother's life. But here go the point that God knows. He says in Genesis 14, he says, and he said, what has thou done? The voice of thy brother blood cried unto me from the ground. Mm. See how revealing it is? Yes. But it's too late. But at the same time, Christ has told you. But see, even Cain himself said, my punishment is great. Ain't that something? Amen. And then even as I drop down, the strong reply in Genesis 4-9, he says, and the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? Mm. And he said, I know not. I am not my brother's keeper. See how easy it is? When, you, when your sisters say, I didn't do that, daddy. When he say, uh, she 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 both been washing the dishes. So now all of a sudden she first row. Uh, we, we traded days. Mm -hmm. But see, the day is your day, and she didn't take care of your day, so it's still your day. <laughs> so we should have been communicating a little bit better had the dishes out that sink. Amen. So daddy would come in talking about them dishes in the sink. But the straight necessity of Christ's recipe, look at his recipe. Here's his recipe right here. In John 15, 14, mm -hmm. he said, ye are my friend if you do whatsoever I command. Amen. He said, you see the word I? That, we, 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 we shut it down right there, I. Mm -hmm. I command. It didn't say what you or me, the brother given say. It says, I command. And that's all. That's a necessity. It's necessary. And it's obedience to who? Christ. And that's what we need to achieve in Christ. And second point of these three points today. It's short, it's brief. Brother Pro is giving you that word today. He says, there is nothing that substitutes obedience but obedience. <laughs> he said, which is necessary for all knowledge and understanding. Look at where we go. And into the Bible we go. See, some people try, it's two substitutes I want to talk about real quick. John 5, 38 through 40. When there, no substitute, when you have not a word of scripture because you try to substitute words to your understanding when you should come to him and you will not come. Look what the Bible reads. Let's go to John. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. <laughs> as we have our Bibles this morning, turning those pages of inspiration to the, see what we have in store here in the inspiring pages of inspiration. 
All this red in front of us. It says, and ye have not his word abiding, which means to remain, mm -hmm. in you. For whom he has sent him, you believe not. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? He says, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. You think. Mm -hmm. See how, how you think? It says, and they that and they are they which testify of me. And verse number 40. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. <laughs> you refuse to come to the house of the Lord mm -hmm. to serve. You still want to sit at home and watch TV, internet, relationship. When you have no true relationship, when you must have deep relationship, that's one relationship with God. If you say you got a relationship with God, and you hear them false preachers at the funeral say, mm -hmm. you must get a relationship with God, I can cut them right there. Amen. They just messed up. They said a relationship. And you must have the relationship. If I have a relationship, I just got a, a, a just flying out of the wind. Just anything goes. If I have the relationship, that's a straight way to Christ. That's the recipe you want and the one you, want, you need. And look what it said in the Old Testament. Tried to substitute. Saul tried to substitute something. And but he had the knowledge, but the sin Samuel said. I will not follow because the Lord had rejected me of being over Israel. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 30. Watch how he works. Watch how the Lord works. Some good meat here this morning. Some information from God. Not from me, but from God. I'm just the speaker. And I'm speaking the very awful, very others of God. Coming from the inspiring pages of inspiration from God. And look what the Bible reads. And Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices and in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than to the fat of rams. Mm -hmm. For rebellion is the sin of rich, witchcraft. Stubbornness is an inquiry uh, iniquity of uh, idol, uh, idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord he had also rejected thee from being king look at that I told you and Saul said unto Samuel I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice look at that he said they, he obeyed their voice instead of the Lord see how he changed in verse 25, this is this is First uh, Samuel 20, 15, 22 through 30. In verse 25, he said, Now therefore I pray thee pardon my sins and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee, from being king over Israel. Didn't I say that? <clears throat> over Israel. He said, and, and, and as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of the mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, the Lord had rent the kingdom of Israel. For there is the day, this day, and had given it to a neighbor, and thine that is better than thou. And he said, and also the strength of Israel will not lie, nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. In verse 30. Then he said, I have repented. Ye honor me now. I pray thee before the elders of my people and before Israel. And turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. You see how I want to go worship the Lord? Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to do the foolishness that you're trying to get me to do. You see how people can turn you away? You see the disobediency and obediency side of this information? Some people say, man, you don't have to serve the Lord. Worship the animal. Worship the creature more than the creator. And that's a faulty situation. As the Roman letter talks about, Romans 1.25 talks about. 
You worship the creature more than the creator. And see, we should be worshiping the Lord every day, all day. We should be serving him on his table, not serving the Lord and serving the devil's table, as the Corinthian letter talks about. That will be idolatry. If we worship and go worship some other God, we are in trouble with God, the one true living God. See, we have many gods, but we have one true living God that we must follow. See, third point of view, hope that has been helpful for you all to this morning. Third point of view, false hope with no hope at all mm -hmm. for being disobedient because of results of not obeying the one true word of God and following the obedience of Christ. Four faithful men I want to talk about, plus. There were four faithful mm -hmm. men, we know, of the Old, Old Testament, well, actually New Testament. In the Old Testament, I like to talk about, there's four men I want to talk about, Noah, Abraham, Abel, and Daniel, okay. what happened in the city. First off, Noah, he, Noah was obedient to building the ark, that's how he told him to build the ark. When people saw him building an ark out there in this desert, like, man, this man out here building an ark? Really? But see, look what, what, the, what the word of God said about Noah. In Genesis 6, 22, he says, Thrust did Noah according to all that God commanded him. Amen. So did he. See what it said? So did he. So he followed and obeyed what the Lord had said. Ain't, ain't that something? Thank God Almighty, the one true living God. And see, here we go about Abraham. Abraham received promises offered up in uh, Hebrew 11, 17 through 19. He said, but by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he had received the promise, what? Up. Full stop. He said, his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall they the, the seed be called. In 19, he says, according to that God was able to raise up, even from the dead, from thence also he received him in a figure. In a figure now. See, you see how the promises were raised up of the offering of this chapter that we're talking about right here, they call it the Hall of Fame chapter because these were faithful men in this chapter. Look at the other men that I can give you real quick, just a brief summary. By faith, Isaac, Hebrew 11.20. By faith, Jacob, Hebrew 11.21. By faith, Joseph, Hebrew 11.22. By faith, Moses, Hebrew 23, 11.23. And look at this. And Abel, a more excellent sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Hebrew 11, 4. He says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speak. Mm -hmm. See how, how it was, how Abel was more greater than Cain, and Cain was jealous of this situation, how he took his brother's life, mm. and how his voice, how he his, his blood cried from the ground as we already talked about. See, Lord already know you killed your brother. And then he gonna turn around and I'm not my brother's keeper. And then he gonna say, you know, what, what, what about sin is, man, he, he know his sin, he know his punishment is great. And it's gonna be greater in judgment day. And look at Daniel, this last point before I close. Also on the list, Daniel had his windows being open Amen. for a reason, in a season for Christ. In Daniel 16, he says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, his windows being open, mm -hmm. in his chambers toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. And he did a four time. Amen. But he did it before his God. And he did this three times a day. 
Can you find men praying on their knees three times a day in this world today? It's hard. I guarantee you, 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 you ask. Now, you have some people with a zeal to try to do that, but not according to knowledge to be in Christ. Mm. There, he's kneeling every day for the Lord. And I just wanted to give this information today. You see how necessary it is to be obedient to the Lord? Amen. And you see how it is, how obedience can help you in the Lord. And you see how these faithful men were took care of in the Lord. And the Lord watched over these men. All the men I named off and all the other men in between in this sandwich of information. May the Lord add a blessing to all the hearers this morning that this word information flows around the land like milk and honey. But as, as I close today, I want to give this invite. If you're not part of the body, you're not part of the church. You got to be part of the body to be part of the church. Ephesians 4.4 4 talks about there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. All ones in the unity of the one scripture. You can read Ephesians 4, 1 through 7. Talks about the unity. You can read Acts 4, verse 10 and 11 and 12. Talking about he's the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. He's the head of the church. And he's the head of the corner. He's over the church. See, you can't be saved by any other name. He even talks about it in Acts 4.20. How can you speak on things you have not heard or seen? See, you got to read from the inspiring pages of inspiration. We have people reading something, but where is it coming from? Give us some information. Give us some directions of where Christ is in on the scene on these things. Yes, we have many men in this world preaching the gospel. They say that they're preachers. They say that they're pastors doctor or all the other name, flattering name they want to give themselves, but do they give you the direct information of what Christ said? Thrust says the Lord. Or do it say, behold, thou, all those words and meaning of what he said, I am. You ain't dying. You ain't gave nothing about no book. You ain't got nothing about no chapter. And you ain't gave nothing about no verse. Sit down before you get towed down by Christ. See, the thing is today, before I close, Romans 10, 17, so then faith coming by, hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and even on this world we live in, in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16, you can't just believe only, you got to believe and be baptized. Mm -hmm. There's a continuation in the scripture yes. of believe and, believe and be baptized <clears throat> so you can be saved. And even confession, the book that you use, I'm going to use it right against you. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 talks about confession. But confession is made unto salvation, not into salvation. And confession is only acknowledging that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we all must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you hadn't confessed him on earth, how are you going to confess you in heaven? And even as I continue on, even the people that don't want to believe, that want to save, the baptism saved. Water don't say what baptism does. 1 Peter 3.21. It's not the washing of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Now baptism now save us. See, that's the obedience to Christ. Even though Christ had to learn obedience in Hebrew 5 eight, he had to learn obedience, and we must learn obedience. And even the ones that don't want to believe that water saved or the baptism saved. Acts chapter 10, verse 47, 48. Can no man for be a water. Now, what you going to do with that scripture? Mm -hmm. That scripture is book, chapter, and verse. It's in the book. All you got to do is take a look. And even as I close, even there were certain disciples that were baptized over in Acts 19, 1 through 5. He said, what then were you baptized down at Ephesus in the upper coast? He said, they were baptized of John. And they said, John barely baptized with baptism of repentance. And when they heard these things, they were baptized in Christ. Mm -hmm. Even John 1, 17 said Moses, the law of Moses was, see, at once upon a time, we were upon the law. But now we're upon the what? Grace and truth. See, the law was by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's what we need to achieve. Even in our setting here, even on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, 40 and 41, he said there were 
He told us to save ourselves from this untoward quick generation. And he even Acts 1041 says, there were 3,000 souls added to the 120. That's 3,120. Then you drop over to Acts 4 4. He said there was another 5,000 saved. This wasn't just mm -hmm. to repeat something. They were baptized into Christ. And that's 8,120 now in, in the faith. And then you turn back to pages to Acts 247. He said, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as you said. You ain't a recipient to come for baptism a month, two months from now. You die. You walk out there and run in front of the car, you're going to die lost, my friend. Because you ain't in the Lord. That's all I have to say. I say more than enough, greater than enough. And may the word of God help you today and always throughout our lives. We're going to sing the song of invitation. We're marching to Zion, page uh, 869. 869. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus around the throne and thus around the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching over to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. Thank you all for being attentive this morning. I really don't have anything out. I think I took all, all the juice out of me. Um, but um, <laughs> the information being spread throughout the land. I hope that that's been helpful to the listening audience and people. Hope that can edify, be edifying to the church and help the church grow a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And we'll have part two on this same setting next week. This is the Lord's will to do this or that. Y'all be safe on this day because we have drunk drivers and all the other things of people in the area. So be safe. And may God be with you to the next point of time. Turn it over to Brother Gibson, Brother Sanders. Any other comments y'all have? So we'll have a closing prayer. Thank you, Brother Sanders, uh, leading us in worship. Appreciate that, Brother Zeal, and caring for the things that the Lord.